Thanks for inviting us in. It's 6 o'clock. We begin tonight with a live look at Indy Southside. Strong winds and rain continue to hit the state. The remnants of Hurricane Helene still wreaking havoc, leaving a trail of power outages in its wake. So here in Indiana right now, we're talking about 15,000 outages between AES and Duke Energy combined. And the impact doesn't stop there. We've seen school activities canceled. We've got high school football games that are canceled, postponed. We've got weekend events across the state called off. We've even got uh, homecoming events that right. have been canceled. And the high wind warning not over yet, right? Not over yet. Some of the strongest winds moving in now and that will continue for the next couple of hours. It's the reason those power outages locally are starting to climb. We're up to uh, 3500 now in Marion County, but I want to point out Dayton and Cincinnati just off to our east as these high winds move through southwest Ohio. We're now up to 60,000 without power near the Dayton, Ohio area, and this strong wind event for us really is just beginning. We now have wind gusts nearing 50 miles per hour in Indianapolis and Shelbyville, Columbus as well at 44 in Muncie and a 40 mile per hour wind gust in Bloomington. Our weather impact alert continues because of these gusts 40 to maybe near 60 miles per hour the next few hours. Power outages and wind damage will be the impacts. You need to continue to follow the forecast, charge those cell phones and and remember, lots of impacts to those outdoor activities because of the wind and the rain. Some of the heavier wind and rain now off to the southeast of Indianapolis from Greensburg to Rushville, Connorsville to Liberty into Richmond. This is all moving back to the north and west. We've also been watching a couple of rotating cells across the southern sections of Ohio, so we will watch that carefully as well over the next couple of hours. Heaviest rain and wind between now and 11 o'clock tonight, but we're not going to be done with this storm system until maybe the early part of next week. So oh we'll goodness. cover that in a seven day. Yeah, so this will be impacting us all weekend. Definitely. All right, Angela, thanks so much. Well, with the thousands of power outages hitting central Indiana right now, crews are out at it. They're hard at work trying to get the power restored. Yeah, we've been seeing strong wind gusts all across the area today. Anna Chalker joins us live tonight at six. So Anna, what are you seeing where you are? Well, hey, Scott and Anne-Marie, we are live on the south side of Indy right now, just off of 465, but let me tell you, it's strong right now. This wind is crazy. I mean, just look behind me. Look at the wind taking over these traffic lights right now. The street sign, it is windy. We were out in Johnson County earlier today. I will say this is the strongest it's been all night tonight as we've been out. We've seen the rain pick up on the roads. It is wet traffic. It is very hard to get through with traffic right now, so please be cautious. I mean, you could just see the water picking up underneath these cars right now. This is the time you need to be extra careful, extra safe. We've been out all day and we've been saying that all day. Be aware of crews, anything, especially if anything falls in the road, just make sure you are out in the best way possible and just making sure you're keeping yourself safe. We're going to be checking this out throughout the night, but of course we'll have updates coming up throughout 11. But again, it's windy, it's wet. Just make sure you're keeping yourself safe out here tonight. All right, Anna, thanks so much. And of course, you can track the strong wind and rain this evening by using our live Doppler 13 weather app. It's free download. You can go get it in the app store. Other news now, IMPD just released edited body cam and home security video. This is a recording from a police shooting that went down here last November. Yeah, police say they were called to a home after a man was firing a gun and displaying erratic behavior. Home security video shows Dontrell Hood initially following the officer's orders, putting his gun on the ground and walking toward police with his hands up. But it was just a short time later that police say Hood turned around, run back to grab the gun, and that's when the officer shot him. No, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's over there. It's over there by one. Don't do it. What you After Hood was shot, he went to the hospital and he survived. He later then was charged with criminal recklessness, resisting police and unlawful gun possession. Last month, Hood received a five year sentence after taking a plea deal. And now to Howard County tonight, where a longtime coach at Taylor Community Schools is now accused of having an inappropriate relationship with one of his players. At this hour, no charges are formally filed, but the school district says he has since been fired due to, quote, 
findings. Yeah, our Chase Howe has been looking into this story all day since the girl's family reached out to us to help and Chase in studio tonight. What did the dad tell you? That's right. He tells me the family was extremely close with this coach, but as I learned today, that's kind of the MO of most predators. They want to get close to the family so they can get closer to the child. A coach who has been with the Taylor School District for more than 20 years is accused of having sex with one of his players. In a statement from the district superintendent, Steve Deshawn, he writes the accusations are deeply disturbing and that he encourages parents to talk to their children on how to recognize grooming behavior. So for most offenders, grooming looks like getting to know a child, figuring out what their wants and their needs are uh, for attention, affection, appreciation. And so it may start out with something as simple as being interested in something a child is interested in. Christina Carabove, the senior attorney for the Zero Abuse Project, says oftentimes grooming will lead to breadcrumbs being dropped. So maybe the, the person in a position of trust tells an inappropriate joke and the child doesn't immediately run and tell their parents. Well, the coach knows that that's OK or the teacher knows that that's OK. And so they just start to push those boundaries with the child. And as long as it's not reported, as long as the child doesn't seem uncomfortable with it or resistant to it, it becomes easier to take that next step and that next step and that next step. The family tells me they fully trusted the coach with all their children. He'd even hang out with all of them and sometimes take the kids to their school activities. Oftentimes at sentencing hearings, you'll have the child's mother or father or relative speak and say, I know that my child was victimized, but I've also started therapy because I feel responsible for what happened to my child. I'm the one who gave this perpetrator access. I trusted him and I never saw this happening. And the family tells me they found out about the alleged relationship by going through their daughter's phone, something Car Above encourages all parents to do. Now, you guys, we can't go around not trusting anyone. So I asked her, what are parents to do? And she said something about setting boundaries. So let's say you're, someone's going to pick up your kid. Say, hey, let me just get your location until you drop them off. Another thing, ask questions. If they're dropped off 10 minutes after they say so, where were you guys at? What were you doing? Because she says that deters predators from getting uh, to know your kids more and more. Yeah. yeah. All right. Some really mm. good advice there and going through the phone, making sure you know what their access code is mm. for sure. Absolutely. All right, Chase. Thank you so much. Some good tips there. Well, the Johnson County Sheriff's Office just sent out the arrest of 22 people in a child sexting operation. The Sheriff's Office teamed up with multiple other agencies for the sweep this week. The 22 men were arrested on charges of a variety from child solicitation to public indecency and also prostitution. And tonight here in central Indiana, IEPD is asking for the community help to find the person responsible for attacking someone along the Monon Trail. Police are telling us this happened on Thursday afternoon. Tonight, our Marina Silva brings us the latest on this investigation. Luckily, the victim was not seriously hurt, but IMPD is investigating after a battery happened on the Monon Trail. It happened during the day. IMPD is looking for community help. They say the suspect is an adult male. Because of the incident, IMPD says they are increasing patrol on the Monon Trail, but also want people to have a safety plan in place. Take cell phones, travel with multiple people if they can, be aware of where, where you are, tell other people where you are, and be aware of your surroundings. They're not releasing a suspect description right now, but they do say if you saw anything out of the ordinary yesterday to contact them. Reporting from the Monon Trail, Marina Silva, 13 News. More rain coming this weekend and the rain tonight is forcing some of the fun inside and that's where we find Dave Calabro. Yeah, hi everybody, Dave Calabro hanging at 11. And what do you guys got going on? Callie, are you ready to go? Here we go, let's see what you got. It's Operation Football, they're having some fun here at Lebanon High School. I did not approve this, by the way. Uh, Callie's about to set sail with these football players. Oh my goodness, it's Operation Football. We'll be right back, stay with us. Also tonight, Insiders now reporting that Caitlin Clark has officially won the WNBA Rookie of the Year. Tonight, the entire team weighs in on the storybook season and they look to the future.